And she said, I'm going to burn my bond down, but someone told me I should speak to you before I do that. <laughs> and I said, well, don't burn your barn down until I get a look at it, and uh, let's, let's see what's going on. Her daughter Pat was with her, and they invited us up to take a look at the barn. And um, so, when I got there, inside the barn was packed from left to right, top to bottom, with beautiful old antique farm equipment, bikes, uh, building parts, plows, there was some carriages, um, beautiful stuff. So we realized that before we could do anything, this had to be taken care of. So, And we also wanted to know a little more about the barn. So we have an associate that we do a lot of work with. His name is Aaron Sturgis, and he owns a company called Preservation Timber Framing. So we invited Aaron to come up, and he um, brought two museum curators from the New Hampshire Farm Museum. And they went through the barn and looked this stuff over and kind of let the carpenters know, let Helen and Pat know what they had and what some approximate values are. So after that, uh, we were on hiatus until they took care of everything that was in the barn before we could start our work. So in the meantime, we had a little bit of work to do. We wanted to date the barn and find out a little more about it. So this is a picture from the right side of the barn. And the main structure behind this naked frame is the main barn that was built in 1875. Um, that's, how, that's what we dated the barn at. It's 40 feet by 60 feet long. And then the back of the barn they added on a 40 foot section. So from right about here forward is the main barn that they added this addition on. And the addition was not a, post in, a true posting beam with mortise and tenon. It was um, all the beam work, but it was more or less bolted and screwed together, correct? Yeah. The forward right portion was uh, an addition that they put on that was a 16 by 20 timber frame barn. And then on the left side of the barn, they added in an, a barn that they called, Pat told me they called it the new barn. And the new barn was a 30 by 60, and in a couple slides you'll be able to see the new barn. The new barn was um, also called the horse barn. That's where they kept their horses, and in, in there was a lot of tack and stuff for the horses. There's the word stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, the new barn was actually an 1820 barn. It was, it was dated at 1820. And evidently the carpenters found this barn or, or someone else in town or nearby was gonna take this barn down or burn it. And they um, took the barn, pulled it down and restored it properly, all framed up and then she. Mm. In the center of the, um, the new barn, as they called it, was a well, a beautiful rock-lined well, about 13 feet deep, mm -hmm. and it was covered over with the flooring, so I think they might have used it in the beginning, but then they, probably dangerous for the horses or whatever, so they covered it over. Mm -hmm. So there was a second well that we found, which I kind of, I'm not even sure we were there that day. No. We were, <laughs> this is a, an ad lib. <laughs> <laughs> we were uh, taking down the, the new barn, what they call the new barn, with Pete, and, um, we untagged the post, and it was just standing there. We drove out the last peg, and the beam dropped down into a well. <laughs> it was directly over a well that we didn't know. And that was inside also? That was inside. Huh. And we didn't even know that was, was there. <laughs> so this view is just a, a close-up of the 16 by 20 barn, and it shows you a little bit of the features of that. We're going to talk a lot more about the timber frame portions in a minute. So this is... Um, different views. So what we ended up doing was we got on site, used scaffolding and safety equipment, and we stripped the entire barn. Took the uh, metal roofing off, there was wood shingle roofing under that, stripped the boards off, and basically clapboarding and the sideboards, basically stripped it down to the frame that you see there. 
And in the last slide, you saw the 16 by 20 barn stripped down. So this is a view from the front, from Helen's house, looking at the front of the barn. You can see there's a door still in place. There were inside sliding doors on both ends. Um, the door wasn't functioning because it had crept down. Um, the other thing is this left side on bottom was all still set up for cows when we started taking it all apart. Yep. You can't see it now because we're going down, but it was, it, they hadn't had cows in there in a long time, but it was still set up for it. This is a view of the left side, and off to the left you can see the, um, the 1820 barn that we haven't skinned back yet. And you can see some of the debris that took place trying to strip it off. There's a good view of the 1820 barn. Oh, I, I actually, I kind of skipped over. I asked Helen uh, why she wanted to burn it down, and she said that the, house, the barn was in disrepair, and they weren't using it anymore for farm animals, and she was paying taxes on a structure that she didn't think she should be having to pay that many taxes on. That's why she wanted the barn now. <laughs> Pretty practical, actually. <laughs> There's a view of the timber work. We're going to get into a little more detail on that in a minute. And that is the right side with the uh, 16 by 20 barn disassembled and out of the way. Can you back up one slide for a second? Uh, you go. Well, it's hard to tell in this picture actually, but the, when we get further into putting the barn back up, this picture is really important. Uh, because it just shows how straight and true everything is, is, even though it was in bad shape. Um, the foundation work and all that was, it just, it just helps to see that everything is really well done. Great, great structure. Great structure, yeah. Hang on that. And then this is a view from the, the street. And this building in the um, left corner was um, Carpenter's general store. As I was told, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a good view of the, um, the new barn and then the structure. And Kevin, you point to the sixth bent from there back is the 40 foot piece that was added on. From here back is the new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from here back. And then also just note that right now, because in this photo, you can see that there's some crookedness in certain places. The, the barn was so well built that when you put it on a proper foundation, <laughs> it's straight and narrow. Yeah. Uh -huh. And a lot, of, a lot of that crookedness is the posts, a lot of water in the bottom of it rotted the posts out, so the posts sagged and brought the whole frame down. Mm -hmm. But when it was restored and brought back up, everything straightened right out. Mm -hmm. So timber frame joint details and damage. This is the front door. There was a large, you saw the large sliding door, and to the left of that was a door going into the barn, a uh, man door. And this post to the right, you can see, is rotted. This is uh, one of the front girts that goes across. A lot of water is getting in that corner, so that girt is all rotted there. This is the front left corner next to that door that was deteriorated. And again, this post sunk down, so that timber frame, now that girt on the right pulled out, the mortise pulled out of the tenon, and you can see the pins. You see the pin was supposed to be right here. This is a great view of a worthy structure. Um, you can see the rafter details, the purlins going across the rafters. The, um, this right here, actually Kevin, point out the tie beam. This is a main tie beam that runs the whole length of the building, 60 feet, and they couldn't find a 60 foot timber 
that was big enough, so they put a scarf joint in it. You see this joint right here? And the way that's structured is, it, it's as strong as the beam itself. Um, this post, so this whole section of roof right here is called a bent. There were six bents. The forward bent, they, they go in a row. So this is the, the right post of one of the bents. And then this tie beam goes back and the rafter comes down onto it. But that rafter is nestled on top of this post, this interior post. So there's a peg right there you can see. It's about as big as my wrist that pins down through the rafter into this girder. And that's what holds that rafter from skimming off. But it's also mortise and tendon onto this post. So it, you're going to see in a couple more slides that one of them has given way, but it stayed right there. It didn't go anywhere. This is the uh, interior, looking down the main alley of the barn. This is the right um, loft, and it's collapsed because that front corner, I showed that dirt being rotted. It collapsed from that rot. There's a couple of slides of the left side looking up into the uh, rafter system in Perlins. So, and then this is the left side interior where the the cows were kept and the loft above it. I believe there were no repairs on that. No, no, no sorry. That, that side was in a much better shape than, than the right. So this is the, um, what I was just talking about. This post has, this dirt is lifted off the post and that rafter goes up and it attaches to an interior post and that's what's holding it. I'm just sliding right off the frame. Pretty interesting how that is. how the joinery fits together in these, in these things and held together by these little wooden dowels. And then this is a view of a rafter coming down on a girder across the tie beam on a post that's intact and in good shape. And then this is just a view of one of the rafters with all the purlins let into the rafter beam so that they're all flush, so that when you deck your roof over, everything lays nice and flat. That also shows a good picture of that tie beam. This, this is that tie beam on the right side that was severely deteriorated. You'll see later on when Kevin starts talking about his repairs, how that had to be all replaced. And then this is just a great view of how well they built these barns. I mean. You've got all this structure in here with a diagonal coming down that keeps the whole thing from racking. And then you have another diagonal on the back. Keep in mind this diagonal on this back used to be the end of the barn. And then this 40 foot section was added later. So that tight, that uh, diagonal was an exterior wall diagonal. It wasn't gonna go anywhere unless they burned it down. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where, where you got involved? <laughs> yeah. And then this is um, the left side diagonal. We threw these in just to show how beautiful the, the craftsmanship was yeah. in this framework. It really is. So what we did next was um, had it all skinned down. We're ready to start disassembling. The first thing we have to do is we have to map the barn out. So what we would do is uh, draw a map of each bed. So this front structure right here, these posts and that dirt coming across is one bed. And then there's a second, a third, fourth, fifth, and a sixth. So this is a map of the first bed. And we simply draw all the components it's, it's not rocket science. I mean, that's it. This is all we needed to put this thing back together. And we put notes on it. We, we labeled each one of the components. And then we wrote on here what was damaged and what was good. And then we tagged it. Kevin, if you could show them the tags. We took copper tags and each beam had a name and we 
uh, used a uh, Pass it around. tooling device to nip. They're hard to read, but each one does have a label, and they're all different. So every single piece of wood in the barn has one of those tags on it. It tells us by the math where it goes. So for example, on this math, it says um, B1 PR2. That would be bent one, principal rafter two, and that was all stamped on that copper. And you can pass that around. And just throw a couple of these around the room. Basically, they're just um, what we use to, to map this thing out and make sure we can put it back together. So after it was all disassembled, put on trailers, it was taken to Kevin's house and stored there. He had to pull it all apart, take the maps, find the pieces, and dig through the pile to restore it. And we're not gonna get any deeper into that right now because Kevin's gonna go into that. But just wanted to show you how, what was involved with the, the mapping and the tagging of the barn. So, the next few slides. If anyone has any questions as we're going along, feel free to ask. Um, this isn't choreographed or anything like that. So. The next few slides are just some cool views of the barn. We're gonna kind of cruise through. And Kevin might have a comment or two as we go, but. My nephew David took these pictures. From a time perspective, we started taking the skin off the barn in January of that year, and we took the barn down in June. Oh my gosh, so the same weekend. You know, Keep in mind, we were, we were working yeah, elsewhere. So this was a lot of time. Work on Saturdays, taking, taking it apart. Mm -hmm. We used a friend of ours, George Morrison, uh, crane. He has a concrete business and he has a crane truck and he came in and um, helped us disassemble the components because the stuff is just too heavy to lift. Mm. Um, uh, what would you say one of those rafters weighs? Oh, uh, 500 pounds? Yeah. Too many people lift, but no. you couldn't get it up in the air. You certainly couldn't get it down without yeah. killing somebody or the beam itself. So. There's a view of... Um, all the purlins off the roof. So you just have your rafters, your... Um... I'm thinking of them up there in the original construction. And how'd they get the rafters up there in the original? Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> some, Poor coward. Yeah, sometimes they would use... Um, I, I actually was doing an estimate on a job up in uh, Machias, and they had photographs in this building of how they were getting the equipment up and they would, um, the beams and stuff, and they would hook a donkey to a rope and they'd have a pulley, and they'd just walk the donkey away, and the beam would go up as they walked away. And I would bet a horse, uh, this was a, a working farm with probably oxen and work horses, they'd probably use the animals to do all the hefty stuff. Some of these beams would lift the donkey, though. <laughs> <laughs> a block and tackle, you know, it's just the ropes. Spider web in front. You can see some of these are these are our roof brackets, those angle brackets up there, and our scaffolding intermixed with the timber frame. There's a good view of the rafters with the um, purling pockets cut in. A lot of discussion before we lifted anything. Kevin, hang on. At any point, did you wonder what you'd get it into? Uh, <laughs> the day we started, <laughs> and then the day we finished, we're like, now what? <laughs> it was quite a, it was, I, I'll tell you what, it was uh, 2008, several years, 20, what was it, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, something like that, I don't know, I can't do the math, but I don't know if I can do it now. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite the way we did it. It's one of the rafters flying <coughs> off. And I mentioned earlier about how they sit on those um, interior. These are interior posts. You can see how they have um, a tendon arm waiting for the rafter to sit back on. And that last, the, the peg is sticking up out of the end of it. That was the last thing to open it on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, see so that left side, side up there? Yeah. Way up. Good question. How did you get the pegs over? Uh, <coughs> 
for some of them we were able to just tap them out, um, but I got one inch um, carriage bolts. Who has a question? I got one inch carriage bolts that were really long that were the same, just about the same size as the hole, and we just tapped them out that way. And, that, and then the carriage bolt could sit in there until we needed, until we were actually ready to disassemble something. Uh, so we actually had those kind of scattered throughout the place from time to time. And then a few of them we had to drill out, if I recall, because yeah. the, the, the uh, pegs sh sheared inside and it was just a mess in there, so we had to drill them. You wouldn't believe how strong those pegs are. Like, there's a sliver of the left. <coughs> yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> there's a good view of the barn with all the rafters gone. A little bit of a mess to clean up on the right. <laughs> So next, the barn was taken to um, the carpenter's yard to the Fay farm, or the Wright family farm on Fay Lane in Waterboro. And what's kind of unique about this is um, the carpenters are an old, uh, I don't mean to say old, but you know, a, a, a family of Waterboro that's been around an awful long time, and the Fays are too. Matter of fact, Kevin is a fourth generation living in the Fay homestead. So this barn went from um, a farm that had decided they were done to a farm that was just starting up. And uh, Kevin, come on over and take it from here. This is all Kevin's <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> in the snow, shoveling the yard, I had to pull this whole thing apart to find every one of those on the map that was had an issue. Because I had to order, I had to do a lumber order so that I could start putting this together. So every piece that I found had a measurable size. I went to Barrio Lumber in Hollis, and he doesn't normally do this, but he milled up every single piece I needed the size that I needed. So it was wow. pretty neat that he was able to do that. Um, so I spent from January until May preparing for this day. Um, so what we did is we had the same crane service. George Morrison came in, he did the foundation for us. I'm trying to do the next slide. This is all the footings for the barn. So every single post on all those vents has its own post, uh, its own footing. And a lot of the interior posts were damaged on bottom. Which we will see some repair work. So I had to, they were damaged enough that there wasn't enough bottom for me to measure the length of the post. So I found on all the posts a pocket that was seemed consistent. So I took a gamble and measured off that pocket the length of one of the good posts and made all the rest of the posts the same. And I told the foundation guy that to make all the concrete level. And didn't really know for sure until the day we set it up if that was going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so I had shims and I had wow. prepared for all this. Um, and it turned out that the barn was built so perfectly that it all sat perfectly as it should. So wow. the, other, the other thing we did when we were doing the mapping, um, I don't know who has bent number one page, but it says something to the effect that all measurements were taken from the outside of post to the inside center, yep. um, and then we have them all written down. So, and the measurements are something like 26 foot, five and seven eighths inches. I mean, that's how close we had it so that all these piers could be placed exactly where they needed to be. Right? Wow. And everyone was, everyone was located specifically where the bend that it was uh, to go to. And, go ahead. And, and by looking at that, that concrete work, you can see that this barn is going to stay here a yeah. while. So this is the pile of beans that I worked on with uh, 
a lot of support from my family all winter, um, peeling the pile apart and finding the one I had to replace and marking it all out and just working at it. Um, that, took, that, that took a good part of the winter to get all that ready. So we had a barn raising date for May 13th or something like that, May 19th, I can't remember now. Um, good. And it turned out to be a diluge of the rain day. <laughs> But we had 26 guys planning to show up, and so we had to keep going. Uh, but the, uh, uh, George, the crane operator, called me that morning and asked me if I was made out of sugar. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not made out of sugar. He said, all right, I'll be over. <laughs> so we, we went ahead. And uh, the way the barn went back together, um, if anyone has any of the maps, you can look at them. But the uh, sorry. tip... I want to say typical, but other barns are built bent by bent. So that bent that you see on the map, as we looked at it, would all be assembled and then stood up. Uh, and this barn didn't go together that way. This barn, you had to build the interior box first and then add piece by piece. Um, and that's how it was built. And it worked out that way, but it just took a lot of head scratching until we started actually putting it up to know which piece went next. So that's why you see the crane set up in the middle of the barn being built first instead of the ends down through. This is a good shot of the middle so, done. Yeah, so Portion. the middle is, in this, in this picture, the middle is mostly done, but we had to brace it all kinds of different ways until the rest of the barn was there. So every time something went up, we had to attach it to itself in different ways just to make sure it stayed true and nothing was going to fall on somebody. Because until it's all up, it's all partially up. So it's just the way it works. And, and safety, of course, a lot of us are hard ass, but just to be really careful. You can see the river, the mud, <laughs> quite a bit. Um, but it did throw it off after, I don't know, mid-morning. So this shows, uh, this, you can see that the crane is being used to help this bent, this portion of the bent go up. It's also men are guiding it, trying to ease it into place. And there are beams like this are gonna go in. As that goes up, a beam will be lifted into place and the joint will come together. Yeah, girts, girts connect all the bents together on the interior. So we uh, put okay, them so yeah, that, That's a great shot of the, of the the ship lap joint that you had to do as a repair on that bed. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna get to that in a second. Oh down here? Yeah. 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 We'll cover some more of that. There's some uh, close ups of some of the joints. What's that? Yep. It's showing a joint being assembled. These are the pegs that we use. You can hand some of these around. Mm -hmm. um, these are the new pegs and those are the old barn pegs that we took out. The old ones were more square than well, round. You got the old ones there. Yeah. And because of the inconsistency of the pegs that we took out, I didn't want to try to find which hole we went back into. So we just we threw up a new one inch hole and used new pegs for, even though the pegs are still in good shape, most of them. So this shows the left side of the barn, the side that in the old photographs was in better shape than the right. Uh, so there's not very much at all new work on this side. Um, it just shows the laid out. So there's going to be another tie beam that goes the whole length before it can go up. And that will be craned into place. So we had that whole 60 foot wall assembled in one shot. And everybody stood back <laughs> as it went up. <laughs> and again, just showing them the pegs going in. Behind this hammer, you can see one of the tags. The other thing that was important for me to know as we, as I put it back together, is that we oriented all the tags on the beam so that if I was standing at the front of the barn, I could see every single tag. So I knew that whichever way I held the beam, it was facing the, the tag was facing the front of the barn. Um, so I helped me make sure that things weren't turned around backwards or upside down. Very important to keep from having to think about it. Yeah, we know every, every time he picked up a beam, he knew it had to turn this way. There's no thinking about it because there was so many um, 
uh, mortise and tenons on the beam. There, there were, we had, like I said, we had 26 men there, plus a lot of their families, and no one was standing around. When, and, and of course, there's stuff happening on all parts of the barn at once. It wasn't just what the crane was doing. The crane would do something, but it took someone five or six different spots at the same time to help that play, to help that get into place. Can you back up that one slide? So for instance, when this went up, there's a connection here and here and here and another one here and here and here. And all those middle pieces had to go in at the same time. So that wall came up, someone had to be holding. In some cases, two men, one on each end of it. Yeah, holding the very in place to allow the, beam, the wall to come in. Once the wall stood up, you can't get those pockets in, the, the tenons in the pockets. And, and every single one of these joints is all hand carved with chisels and all that stuff. So every joint is slightly different from every other joint, right? Yes. Well, to that point, the um, marriage marks, the... Yep. So these, these marks the right here are scribe marks from the old barn, from the original builder, to show that this is the block of the beam, the top of the beam, and then their tenon is inside there, and they cut a pocket and made everything fit. So he would have brought those scribe marks around so that he could then cut in, and then he would have used those to make a marriage mark for the tenon on the beam that was going in. And we got to see all that. You know, you're taking it apart, and you're like, oh, look at this. Look at that. Look at how they did that. And we did it. Harder to find, but we were able to find their, you know, we tagged it with the copper tag, but they had tagging, the tagging system as well. There was more numbers to associate it with. It's too hard for us to use their yeah. stuff. Yeah. A lot of times it would be three slash marks, mm -hmm. yeah. and then the next beam next to it would have three slash marks. So you knew those two married together. Yeah. So this shows some of the new work um, and some of the fine tuning they had to go into making it fit when the time actually came to put it together. This is the pocket, these are pockets for the uh, Floor joists. Um, one of the pictures showed the right front corner of the barn. The floor had collapsed, and this is the repair work for that section. So the, this is a new beam that went in, and then once it's up in place, other uh, floor joists will be set into those pockets. Uh, this also shows that this is the footing that we put in, and we put a, an eight by eight timber all the way around the entire barn and set the barn on top of that, so that all these po all these posts are tied together by sitting on a wooden post. So that not that the concrete would move, but just to help tie everything together. It gives you a nail at the bottom of the sheathing when you do the side. This shows the scarf joint that will go together. This, this is labeled A, this is labeled C, that on the tie beam on the right hand side of the barn, the entire top tie beam was rotted or broke as we took it apart. Um, so that had to be completely replaced, and I couldn't get a 60 foot beam either. So I had to make that one up in four pieces. And these are the, this is the, it's called the scarf joint, blade, uh, it's called the scarf joint, and these would fit together, and you'll see a picture of that later. Um, this is the post on that same side that had to be completely replaced. Um, and that was kind of a tricky one to mill because it's tapered, it's wider on top than on bottom. So we had to kind of custom cut that. That one was very, very heavy. That was an eight by 12. If you look on the top of the post, you can see the tenons um, where the tie beam will sit on. And then you can also see a pocket cut on the top. That's a diagonal, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah this way up there is, a, is a part of a brace. So that's actually, it's hard to see in this photo, but it's cut at an angle. Um, that beam, I had to, go get specific from the same lumber yard. It's eight by 12, and it was 16 feet long. And I had it on the roof rack, <laughs> on the rack of the truck. And uh, he set it up there with a lift. And when I got home, I grabbed it to slide off into the barn and slid it off, nice. But it hit the floor, and that was it. <laughs> I didn't realize how heavy that was, I couldn't pick it up. So anyway. The other interesting thing about a scotch joint is, if you look, Right there, that is actually at an angle. It's not a right. It's not a right angle cut. It's in at an angle, and then the other piece is cut at an angle, and they fit together so that if you were strong enough to lift that beam from one end, the other end would stay intact. 
it would hold itself up. Yeah. Strong, a strong noise. So this just shows more of the process. So like I said, this wall had been stood up. These beams were put in at as the same it time. Stood, they stood up all the way down. So that's why a lot of men had to help in order to connect every single one of these vents at the same time. Um, and this actually shows the first rafter being set off in the back. This is the other one. Now, from my perspective, uh, as I'm on this day, that was a scary moment um, because my beam, my tie beam that I built, was not as strong in in the flex category. It's as strong straight up, up and down. With the weight bearing is just as strong, but the flex of it is not as strong as a true solid beam like the other side was. So when when we picked that up with the crane, you can see it's got four different anchor points. We also needed vent on poles to hold that side of the wall up. And I thought it was gonna break. The crane is starting to lift, the wall is starting to flex, and I have all my friends <laughs> underneath it holding it up. And it was a it was a pretty scary moment for me. <laughs> I don't think they even realized it, but for me, for about five know. minutes, it was tough to go. <laughs> and, uh, so this, this shows, again, the, the guys having to hold the beams up as it's being brought into place. The barn, the wall is actually still not plumb. It's out, and the beams are being set up so that the wall can be brought in the rest of the way. And the wall was stood up and then held back. Yeah. And the far end was held back more so that it could come in right in phases right. and connect with the beams across. The crane operator was key. He was good. Very, very good. Yeah. Just shows a part of what's going on. Um, these guys up here are waiting for the next purlin to come in. These are the purlins that go across. And it showed, one of the slides showed the pockets, all the different pockets. Well, the purlins, they, in a way, cut corners on and they just cut down a tree and smooth an edge rather than having a log, a log mill. So they were crooked as wherever the tree was. So the purlins had to go in exactly the same spot need to set them in because this crooked 30 foot long piece of wood, you put it up there and as long as it's in the right place, it follows all the pockets, all of the <laughs> crook of the beam just so to, to make it straight. To make it, yeah. Awesome. So I go ahead and you're eyeballing down the raft, the vents, they don't, the pockets don't line up, yeah, but it does with that trick. It's right. not going to work. It's not going to work. And then it fits in, you go, oh, yeah, it is going to work. <laughs> wow. And, and this, this is, is the same thing? showing all the different joints coming back together that we saw earlier as it was being taken apart. And this, this is the same day? That all this got done the same? Well, mm -hmm. all the, all the uh, assembly was all, it was a two day event, but so far it's still the same day. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, hold on. Everything was done except the purlins on the first day. Mm -hmm. The wall, this is the outside too. wall was before and, the Yeah, and, and once, <laughs> once we had the outside <laughs> wall started, my wife and a few other people started sheathing the outside wall. So, kind of multitasking. <laughs> it's a good crew. A lot of people. Yeah, uh, this guy up here on the, on the top, he was really motivated because he was having a wedding in that barn. Six weeks. Wow. <laughs> 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 uh, this is uh, showing uh, this hammer. A friend of mine who came that day who was a wood turner, brought this as a gift to thank me for letting him be a part of the barn <laughs> uh, Just to show the hammer, okay? We used that hammer a few times. It was so pretty at the time, I didn't want to use it too much. Some of the tools that we used um, on that day, there was a lot of different tools in there for the timber framer. And then again, this would be the second day because um, the pearls are in. Everything but these was in on the first day. That's a great shot of um, the repairs that were necessary. You can see the tie beam going across, a 60 foot tie beam. This here, all the way across. And that one post that had to be replaced was heavy. You have a girt over here. Yep. A diagonal top on that diagonal. This diagonal um, was broken right at the peg. Uh, this, this girt was rotted and it was at the same point at the 
where they connected, so the tie, the uh, brace was bad. But I also couldn't get that was like a 22 foot long brace. I couldn't get that. Um, the Sawyer could only go 19 feet. So what I was able to get was a long enough piece, and then I had to join that together too. So that's got that same scarf joint in it on a smaller scale. Shows all the different things happening, all the racing. A lot of that could have come down at this point, but we just left everything in place until everything was finished. Um, it's hard to see, but this brace right here is not in all the way. There's a gap up there, and we felt that was just the way it was. Um, when the bottom, when we were done for the day, my uh, George, the foundation guy, and I get our taking this crane down, put it away. We were standing over by the house and we were looking down this wall of the barn and the last bit of the barn was leaning out just a little bit. And he says, everything has been so good, why is that leaning? I said, I don't know, maybe something's off. He said, well, I'm gonna straighten it. So he brought the crane back over and he used the boom of the crane and pushed on this corner of the barn and it made that joint come together perfect. The peg hole then lined up and the barn stayed ever since. Uh, this is amazing how perfect the craftsmen were that built this. They, everything was done just so. There wasn't any. Nothing shoddy. Nothing shoddy. Yeah. This is just showing the joinery on the inside, the contrast, <coughs> the new and old. Um, just a simple half lap joint on the sills because you've got to join wood here and there when you're doing this kind of thing. More. Details of the joiner, seeing things come together. This is called a bladed scarf joint. Um, kind of like the one we saw earlier that had angles, this is more square. This is, is considered the blade. And this is how I repaired the bottom of the post that needed work. So uh, when I mentioned before that I found a pocket to measure from, this is how I determined my length. I, I added this piece in and determined my length. And there's three, pe uh, there's three or four, four. pegs. Four pegs? Yeah, I, I had a front view of this okay. one. Um, this particular post had been chewed on by the cows over the years. <laughs> so I actually kind of married the post into it rather than having a big block of wood. I kind of shaved it down to honor the cows. <laughs> <laughs> there's the other. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's only three. I'm sorry. So you can see that the beams kind of chewed away a little bit and I just kind of brought it close to it just to make it a little better. So this is a traditional barn raising thing where you take a pine bough and that's it to the top of the barn to pay tribute to the wood that you use. Um, so I did. It's you know, one of those things that you both do. So I did. And, uh, that's a long way up. <laughs> so here we are just continuing wow. with the next phase of building, putting this thing together, side in. Um, we have a big window that, um, in some other pictures here, there's a big window up here. Um, so it just shows it going together. Another picture of how we all, how we did it all. Um, this shows the front of the barn. We now, Oh, we're putting another window over here. We haven't yet, but we have we have um, th this barn had a rolling door that went on the inside of the barn, and it was all destroyed on there in there anyway. I had to rebuild all that, <clears throat> and I didn't choose to put in the rolling door on the inside again because I wanted the space on the inside of the barn rather than having the door limiting me. Um, so I, when I rebuilt that loft, it doesn't. I was able to just do a more traditional frame, and then my doors open on the outside. This shows the big window in. Um, and then it's not in this particular picture, but up here at the very peak, we cut in a heart. It's about this big, which was a German custom of just letting in a little bit of light. And it was, they would put them in a whole bunch of places on the barn, but the, uh, I really just did a small heart to kind of make a tribute to that custom as well. <laughs> <laughs> Mark 
good day. Yeah. Those, those old verses. Yeah. That's a great view of the, uh, the new versus the old. Yeah, the book. And now, uh, we have cows back in the barn. <laughs> uh, so this is actually the same section of the barn that we had, that the carpenters had cows. Uh, these poles are called ironwood poles. They were from the original barn. They were floor to ceiling length. They got, they got cut by the, they got cut. Um, so we repurposed them in the short fashion. Um, but they keep our cows in. The cows can put their heads through and eat their hay. And we can lock them in if we want to. Um, so now it's 